Hi, I'm Brian from Edmunds. And I'm Alistair from Edmunds. Every year, a deluge of new or updated cars hit the market. But not all of them are worth talking about. We're going to cut through the noise and cover the most important refreshers, redesigns and new models you'll be able to buy in 2024. All from A to Z. Well, actually, accurate of Volvo, there is no Z here. Apart from the Nissan. Obviously. And now, without further ado, let's get on with it. Acura finally joins the EV race with a compact electric SUV called the ZDX. Now, I thought if you were going to revive a nameplate, it should be one that was well-loved. I guess that's just me. Look past the Acura badge on the ZDX's hood, and you see that this is actually a Chevy Blazer EV, as Clint found out. And at the risk of upsetting some people, if you Google Chevy Blazer EV interior, you will see some similarities. But I'm not gonna let that spoil this party because although this 11.3 inch touchscreen and 11 inch driver display may well be from the GM parts bin, but we have no qualms with that. And Acura installed its own software to give it its own unique touch. We do actually really like how the Blazer EV drives, so at least it's got that going for it. Audi's electric cars have so far been a bit, well, hmm. But their new EV SUV is trying to change all that. The Q6 introduces a new electric architecture with improvements all round, including faster charging speeds. That's potentially good news for other future Audis as well. BMW has given the storied 5 Series sedan one of its more attractive recent redesigns. And yes, we finally put the words BMW and attractive in the same sentence again. It feels like it's been a while since we said that. Alongside the gas engines, you can choose from two EV powertrains in the new 5, a single motor rear wheel drive or dual motor all wheel drive. We've been impressed by recent electric BMWs, and as a bonus, the i5 M60 is the quickest of the new 5 Series options, as quick from 0 to 60 miles an hour as the last M4 competition that we tested. Cadillac has an electric version of the Escalade coming, which shares much of its hardware with the Hummer EV. This thing will be absolutely massive, and should weigh only slightly more than an Abrams battle tank. Cadillac is claiming incredible power and range, which we can't wait to test. Inside, you'll be able to get giant screens everywhere, including a 55-inch version across the whole dashboard. Expect to see this $100,000 plus beast in music videos soon. They still make those? Yeah, for the youth and the Kardashians. Chevy has three new EVs, and one is already on sale, the Blazer EV and we would know because we recently bought one and gave it to Clint for review. Here in the driver's seat, I am very pleased to report that things are much better than I thought they were going to be. And that's not just important for the Blazer, but for all of GM's future EVs. Here's a little homework to help understand why. The Blazer is a start from scratch moment for Chevy electric vehicles. It rides on a new sophisticated electric platform called Ultium, which will also underpin all of Chevy's EV lineup. So there's a lot riding on it, literally. The Equinox EV promises a starting price of around $35,000, although that's changed a few times now, so we'll see how that shakes out when it finally goes on sale. But with the bolt on hiatus, we're really glad to see an affordable EV in Chevy's lineup. Chevy's also going to be launching its first electric truck to compete with the Ford F-150 Lightning, the Silverado EV. It's promising more max horsepower and range than the Ford, but similar towing capacity. Of course, you can expect to pay a pretty penny for that much truck, with maxed out Silverado EVs projected to cost more than $100,000. Which is a hell of a lot of truck. But don't worry, gas stalwarts, because Chevy hasn't forgotten you. There's a new generation of the Traverse, one of the most spacious mid-sized three-row crossovers on the market, and now with a lot more shiny tech options. Emmy, recently, got a good look. But you guys, look at these screens. Okay, so I've got an 11 inch reconfigurable gauge cluster and then I've got 17.7 inches of screen real estate here. I mean, last year was like this tiny little eight inch screen and now I've got this giant thing here. Now I haven't had a chance to go through any of this, but Chevy system has always been really intuitive and easy to use. So I don't really expect anything less. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are here and you also get a thumbs up for the available Super Cruise. And of course, there's the first hybrid Corvette, the E-Ray. I hear it's fast. That all-wheel drive, you can pick up the throttle really early and you get the front axle pulling you out. So just before the rear might start to spin and slide in a Z06, like here, you've got a lot of grip still on the table. The transition onto the throttle feels very natural. There's no like giant spike in power from the electric motor. But all in all, this car feels very natural. It doesn't even really feel like an all-wheel drive car except when you power out. And then you get to feel the front end pull you away. 
really remarkable. Fisker is joining the Can You Beat Tesla game with the Ocean. The Ocean is roughly the same size as the Model Y and offers similar acceleration at roughly the same price. You also get party tricks like a rotating central display and a solar roof. Now on paper, the Fisker looks great, but we know from experience, it can take a little time for these new EV companies to work out the bugs on a new car like this. So we've of course ordered one and we're really excited to get ours in sometime. Ford has updated their trucks this year. The next generation Ranger gets the upgrades you'd expect like a giant touchscreen and an optional V6 for extra power. There's also a Raptor version coming for you dirt enthusiasts. Amy had a chance to get a closer look. So under the hood here is a three liter EcoBoost V6 and that's pushing out 405 horsepower and 430 pound feet of monster dune crushing torque. Now for those of you keeping track, that is the same torque as the Chevy ZR2, but a lot more horsepower and don't even get me started on the Tacoma TRD Pro. That is not a go fast truck like this one is. The F-150 gets a refresh and Alman Clint had the lowdown. To me, one of the bigger pieces of news with the new F-150 is a shakeup with the powertrain lineup. The old 3.3 liter V6 is no longer the base engine. Now it's a turbocharged 2.7 liter V6, and with that, you actually get a bit more power. About 12% more horsepower, now up to 325 HP. And the torque, you actually get about 50% more torque compared to the old 3.3. That's at 400 pound feet now. The interesting part there is that you still have the full F-150 lineup of engines that includes the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, the 3.5 liter PowerBoost Hybrid, and the Raptor still comes with six and eight cylinder engine options. Among other updates, Ford finally jumps on the trick rear end bandwagon with their take on a side opening tailgate. With all these changes, you should know that the base price has jumped almost three grand. Honda is building a new electric SUV, the Prologue. And much like its Acura sibling, this one is also based on the new Blazer EV, but it oddly lacks a lot of what the Blazer has to offer. All Prologue models are gonna feature the Honda Sensing Suite standard, which means you're gonna get things like adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist standard on all these models. But the one thing you won't get is an equivalent to GM Super Cruise. The ZDX is going to have a hands-free driving technology based on that GM system, but here in the Prologue, you're not gonna get anything that advanced. Well said, me. At least the interior feels very Honda, but Honda's first modern EV in the US still feels like a bit of a stopgap. Hyundai's next generation Santa Fe gives us real Land Rover Defender vibes. Along with boxy new looks and a nod to some light off-road ability, the Santa Fe finally gets a third row adults can actually use. In fact, it's huge inside. That means we're going to put the Santa Fe through the semi-famous Three Brian's test. Now, I'm 5'11", so unlike my vertically challenged colleague Clint, I'm actually gonna give this third row a real adult-sized test. What I've done is I've put the front seat, the driver's seat where I like to drive, I put this second row seat where I can sit comfortably, and then I see how I can fit in the third row. And, and the answer to that question is actually pretty well. There's a little bit more leg room, um, so my knees aren't jammed up here, but the thing that I really appreciate is the increase in headroom. Hyundai is also looking to prove that high performance EVs can win over petrol heads. Don't you mean gas heads? Sure, can win over gas heads with the Ionic 5N, the first Hyundai EV to wear the N badge. Hyundai says it'll make 641 horsepower. That's double what the existing all-wheel drive Ionic 5 puts down, and that car is already good for 0 to 60 in just 4.7 seconds. You can also turn on fake engine noises and fake gear shifts. Sorry, simulated engine noises and simulated gear shifts to ease the pain of trading cylinders for magnets. However you feel about that, this car still looks to be good fun, and we can't wait to get it to Edmunds U-Drags. Jeep's tough go-anywhere twins, the Wrangler and Gladiator, both get refreshers to make them easier to live with when driving on regular old pavement. And they add some nice technology upgrades too. Amy had a chance to get behind the wheel of the Wrangler and she liked what she saw and felt. Ooh, getting that 44 degree approach angle, there she goes. What pitch have we got now? 20 and 31. <laughs> Kia's new electric three-row looks and feels fantastic. But while we love the roominess and the tech of the EV9, if you want to spend less than 60 grand on one, you'll have to settle for going very slowly. Clint had a chance to test out the EV9. The GT line is rated by the EPA at 270 miles, but our test team managed 306, showing the same trend we've seen with other Kia EVs. 
they outperform their estimates. All right, let me just prove a point real quick. That is way quicker than it needs to be. There's 60 miles per hour. I mean, you just saw that zero to 60 time. That is exceptionally quick for a nearly 6,000 pound three row family SUV. Lucy does finally reveal their upcoming electric SUV, the Gravity. We got our first official look at the LA Auto Show and it promises the same incredible horsepower and range as the Lucid Air. Alistair Weaver here for Edmunds at the LA Auto Show with a new Lucid Gravity, which you can see is certainly uh, pulling a crowd. This is an all new three row SUV from Lucid that will go on sale at the end of the next year. And they have some pretty big claims for it. They reckon a range of over 400 miles. Can't wait to put that through the Edmunds EV range test. Over 800 horsepower, zero to 60 very quickly indeed. And a very spacious interior with a 34 inch screen, which apparently will have guided meditation. Starting price around $80,000, but clearly not in the upmarket trim you see here. We only hope that the build quality issues we've experienced with the Lucid Air will have less pull on the gravity. See what I did there, Brian? I see it. Genius. Mercedes-Benz is bringing S-Class design and amenities, but at a fraction of the cost, to the new E-Class. It cribs the look and feel of Mercedes Ultralux Cruiser in a more affordable, less bulky package. I'm also very happy to say that the all-terrain wagon continues on because A, it looks awesome, and B, it saves another station wagon from the Grim Reaper. <laughs> There's also a new hardtop convertible, the CLE, and that replaces both the convertible versions of the C-Class and E-Class with a single vehicle. This two-door offers the luxurious accommodations of its siblings with the engine choices of the E-Class, but it is a little sad to see the convertible pool is still drying up. Mini is delivering a new generation of Cooper and Countryman, the old Mini Cooper lasted a decade and felt desperately behind the times. But these new models intro some very flashy features, along with much improved all-electric powertrain options. Clint had a chance to get a closer look. So we're here at the back of the new Cooper, and we're used to seeing the Union Jack signature in their taillights, but this generation takes it completely to a whole new level. Obviously, the shape of the taillight is different. It's a lot more angular and just modern looking across the board. But because this is a full LED taillight, you can actually change the lighting signature. I've never seen that in a production car in the US before. This is the default look, but you can just have the horizontal lines here. You can have arrows. You can customize the way your taillights look from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. If you want to. Nissan is refreshing the Rogue, and the trip to the cosmetic surgeon produced a new nose job and some other stuff. Polestar is finally introducing two new long promised EVs to join the Polestar 1 and Polestar 2. They will be named, you guessed it, the Polestar 3 and Polestar 4. Anyway, the 3 is a mid sized SUV offering up to 300 miles of range and quick acceleration, though at a price tag of around $85,000, that will keep it out of reach for many. The Polestar 4 is a compact SUV and it will be more attainable, starting at just around $60,000. Porsche is refreshing the Cayenne, and the headline news is the new Turbo E Hybrid. This plug in hybrid pairs an electric motor with a twin turbo V8 for a total of 729 horsepower, making it the most powerful Cayenne yet. There's also an updated Panamera sedan for execs in a hurry. The Ram 1500 Rev is the first all electric truck from Ram and it's making waves with a claimed range of up to 500 miles and more max towing capacity than the Chevy and the Ford. And those are two things that we're looking forward to testing on our own. But we're also excited because now we finally get the three way electric truck battle that was promised. But if you don't like the idea of your truck going fully V, Ram also has you covered with the upcoming Ram Charger, which combines 145 miles of battery range with a gas V6, though that gas V6 doesn't actually drive the wheels. It just extends the vehicle's range by charging the battery. That's basically like using a Camaro as a generator. I actually think it's a great idea. Not a new idea, but a great idea. On to Subaru. Subaru redesigned its smallest SUV, the Crosstrek, but our editors think it feels like a moderately improved version of the old Crosstrek. Still a good pint-sized off-roader, but still not the best pick if you spend every day on the asphalt. The next generation Forester finds itself in the same boat. Despite being redesigned, it's not much of a departure from its predecessor. As always with Tesla, there are caveats, and as we're filming this, the company still hasn't officially confirmed that the refreshed Model 3 Highland will actually come to the United States. But it can't not come, right? No. 
Expect a raft of improvements to ride quality, build quality, and sound editing, but also expect some new frustrations. Tesla's ditching the shifter and turn signal stocks for buttons and touchscreen controls. Two steps forward, one step back. And then there's the elephant-sized doorstop in the room, the Cybertruck. Will it be better late than never? General shape aside, it's not really the same truck that was originally promised in 2019, but does that even matter at this point? And with its love it or hate it styling, you've also already probably made up your mind whether this is the best truck or the worst truck ever and nothing in between. We'll let you know what we think once we get our hands on one. And we have one on order, which we have for uh, four or five years. A long time. A long time. The Toyota Camry, the old faithful of sedans, gets a heavy refresh. And the headline is that it's all hybrid now. Alistair recently got a closer look. That's me, Brian. Alistair got a closer look. It was inside that the old Camry was really starting to show its age, and this new one is a big improvement. Toyota says it was inspired by ocean waves, whatever that means. But what I say is when you put them side by side, it looks remarkably similar to the Kia K5. If you sort of invert these air vents, then you've got a, a very, very similar aesthetic and a very, very similar layout. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, and it certainly feels a lot more upmarket than the old cars, particularly in these higher trim versions. What an awesome segment. The Toyota Tacoma, the most popular mid-size truck in America, gets a much needed redesign complete with brand new powertrains, including a hybrid option. The Toyota Grand Highlander solves the main thing we don't like about the normal Highlander, the cramped third row. And it does so by stretching the wheelbase nearly half a foot. That might not sound like much, but it's a huge improvement that rockets the Grand Highlander to near the top of our mid-sized SUV rankings. And if you're thinking, I'd like that with an L instead of a T on the hood, the new Lexus TX is almost identical, but offers a few refinements along with a unique plug-in hybrid powertrain. And finally for Toyota, the Land Cruiser is not dead, it's surely alive. The new Cruiser goes back to its roots as it is both smaller and cheaper than the old model and meant to be more of an accessible off-roader than a luxury truck. But don't worry, if you want more leather and more horsepower, the Lexus GX and LX are there to provide the luxury bona fides. Bona, fi bona fides? Bona fides? Bona fides? How's your Latin? My pig Latin's excellent. I have no idea what that is. V is for Volkswagen, and if you've made it this far, thank you. Get yourself a glass of wine. And then like and subscribe. Or like and subscribe so you don't forget, then get yourself a glass of wine. Anyway, Volkswagen's bus revival, the ID.Bus, is finally going on sale. And it's more than just a nostalgia play with lots of room inside and a lot of fun features, as Lauren found out. Overall, you've got great headroom, great legroom. It's just, it's a decent place to enjoy a nice little road trip. All right, in the second row, again, great space. Legroom, headroom, you're sitting pretty comfortably. The seats hold me well. And an added bonus back here in the second row is you have the ability to have heated seats. You also have USB-Cs that are conveniently placed right in the door so you can stay charged up and climate control on both sides. The new EX30 is a tiny electric SUV with a starting price of around $36,000. He managed to impress a very handsome, charismatic gentleman when he had the chance to get behind the wheel. What's it like to drive? Well, it is very sensible. It's, it's very refined, it's very comfortable. The ride is good, especially for a, a vehicle with such a short wheelbase. The steering doesn't have tons of feel, but overall it's, uh, it's responsive, it's agile. And even on the highway, it's very, very quiet in here. You could call it luxurious. Ah, lovely trip to Barcelona. Super Rioja. If you need a lot more room, Volvo's electric three row should finally go on sale in 2024. The X90 has been delayed over software issues, but based on Volvo's other EVs, we have high hopes for this large luxury family hauler. Though with pricing expected to start around 80 grand, it'll need to offer a lot more than just Swedish minimalism. Why is everything so expensive? It's inflation. <sighs> so we made it to V, but we're not done. You thought you'd got there, but you haven't. We've got a new bonus round. Now, these are the cars that didn't make the official cut, but that Brian and I thought were interesting enough to pontificate about. So let's start with Ineos, a British chemical company that's launching an all-terrain SUV 
in the style of a classic Land Rover Defender, but with a six-cylinder engine sourced from BMW. With proper body-on-frame construction, the Grenadier wants to combine a classic approach with modern engineering. And starting at just over 70 grand, it's competitively priced for a luxury off-roader. Most startups are jumping on the EV bandwagon, so the Grenadier definitely promises something a little different. I think it's kind of cool. It's very cool. It's, it's very, cool. very, very cool. Lotus is giving Add Lightness and Simplify a rest in favor of its new slogan, Add Power and SUVify. For the upcoming Electra electric SUV, Lotus is targeting a max power output of over 900 horsepower and a 0 to 60 mile an hour sprint of under 3 seconds, all with seating for 4. In Elise, this is not. And from Lamborghini, they begin their electric revolution with the introduction of the Revuelto. I think it's Le Revuelto. I can't Re 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 Revuelto? It's a bull. It's a charging bull. The Revuelto has a V12, much like the Aventador that it replaces, but it also adds on three electric motors, which means that it puts out just over 1,000 horsepower. And it'll be a big rival to another hero car of 2024 the McLaren 750S. Think Italian Brio versus British craftsmanship. And talking of British engineering, Morgan has a new three-wheeler for 2024. It's probably the silliest car on sale in America right now, but also the coolest. And with prices starting from just over 50 grand, it's also, Brian, read the Absolute words. bargain. Absolute bargain. Massive, massive want. Finally, the Auto Q says, conclusion. There are still no Z cars, Apart from the Nissan. Of course. But it does seem like there's a lot of zeal for EVs right now. Would you say that the zeitgeist is definitely shifting? Reaching a new zenith. I'm out of Z words and no one is watching anymore. Maybe my mum made it through. If you are still there, thank you. It's been an epic performance as always. I've been doing this for like four years now. Hope you enjoyed watching. We'll look at the data. Some of you, I promise, will have made it to the end. So thank you so much. We love you all. And if you like what we're doing, subscribe, like, everything else that goes with it, and head to edmunds.com slash news for everything else from the team. I'm going to keep the energy going right to the very end. Thank you to Brian. Thank you to me. Thank you to the production team. Thanks for watching. See you next time.